Although the year the piano was invented is not known precisely, it seems that towards the beginning of the 18th century, Bartolomeo Cristofori from Italy had created this acoustic instrument, which makes sound as its strings are struck by small hammers. Since then, many pianos have been made and developed, some of which have been played by world-famous composers. Every piano could possess a hidden story. The story begins here. Since I have been in the piano business for a quarter of a century, I may say, I have come across many pianos during my career, and I have obviously been attracted towards the most interesting ones. My Australian friend and pianist, Robert Wedderburn, had a great collection of pianos in Malta and abroad. Since he had to leave Malta, I bought some pianos from him, amongst which was this piano from the year 1847. Its cabinet is constructed with a special cut of mahogany, making it a very beautiful piano, but not only. As a pianist, I do not look at the aesthetics, but I obviously value its sound and the way it functions. This piano is in very good condition and it possesses an immensely delicate sound. When I bought this piano from my friend, it was never my intention to hide it from the rest of the world. Both me and my friend did not know about its history. I decided to make an amateur video and upload it on the internet for fun. But I also included some details pertaining to it. After a few months, I received an email from a well-known Chopin scholar, Professor Kohler from Switzerland, whereby he wrote to me that my piano was in all likelihood played by Chopin himself. One can only imagine how exciting it is for someone to discover that he has something so precious in his collection. It is understood that the last time Chopin intended to spend summer at his partner's vacation home in Noan in France, he sent a piano there as he did every year. A few months before, he would have visited the player shop in Paris, since he loved these pianos dearly, to choose an instrument and have it sent to Noan. A few weeks after, he sent the piano there with the intention of composing upon it. Chopin and his partner broke up, and he did not follow the piano, meaning that he sent it there but did not go himself to be able to enjoy it. Chopin never purchased this piano or any other, but instead there was an agreement with the Playel firm whereby it would be sent back after he used it, to be rented out or sold, naturally at a much higher price, since he would have played on it himself.
An interesting part of the story, and one which almost proves the history behind this piano, is that on the 22nd November 1847, his ex-partner, Aurore de Devan, who was a very famous writer in France, if not one of its best-known writers during the 19th century and who wrote under the pen name George Sand, because unfortunately at that time women in literature and the arts could not expose themselves much, wrote to her friend after the breakup that Chopin passed on the message to her through her daughter that she could keep the piano at her place. She replied that she did not want to have obligations towards those who hate her. She wrote this because theirs was not an easy breakup, but a troublesome one. In this letter, George Sand stated that she sent back the piano to the Playel company four days before, on the 18th November of that year, so that it may be rented or sold accordingly. Who knows how many times this piano exchanged hands till it actually found its way to Malta. Probably in the 1980s, 1990s, my friend the pianist Robert Wedderburn, who was a piano collector and who used to live in Malta, Sengler in fact, chose this piano and it was he who brought it from France to Malta. When I came to choose this piano, I took in consideration its mechanism, its sound and its unique qualities. First of all, it is not tuned like modern instruments, it is tuned to a lower standard pitch and its sound is more delicate. An interesting feature in its mechanism is, for example, that its keys do not go down as far as a modern piano, they have less key depth. Some people think that this makes life easier, but not necessarily. Why? This is because in a much shorter distance, the pianist must bring out a great variety of sounds and voices from this piano. It is not my intention to keep this piano hidden from the public, and in fact, last December I gave a concert on this piano at the Manuel Theatre, together with seven other musicians. This piano has already been appreciated by the public, and in this concert, we perform music which Chopin wrote for piano and orchestra, and which I arranged myself for piano sextet, piano and five other instruments. It is good to note that this piano is not tuned like any other piano. I researched how pianos used to be tuned in Chopin's times and discovered that the musical scale temperament was not split like it is today. 
This is because piano tuners back then had not yet discovered a method, how to create the equal scale like today. This is why when Chopin's music is played on this piano, one is uniquely able to hear it in the authentic way he heard it himself while he was composing. This is because I have also given importance to tune the piano this way. Just before this concert took place, the UK Chopin Society got to know about it. Incidentally, one of the directors of this well-known society happened to be in Malta. And like all musicians and persons involved in the music scene, he naturally visited the Manuel Theatre and took a look at the season. He took particular notice of this concert and wrote to me. From something local, this became internationally known, arousing a great deal of interest amongst the most prominent people and scholars in the world when it comes to Chopin, as they began corresponding with me. This is one of only four pianos in the world which Chopin played and are still in playable condition today. Because of its rarity, there was a small debate about the words which are needed to describe this piano. Since Chopin never bought any piano, one can hardly say Chopin's piano, but that this is a piano upon which he played and one which he selected himself for his own use, in itself imparts the highest status to this piano.